You know, this year when we decided to take on a topic like weather, you wonder what does weather have to do about uh, digital transformation. But when you think about it, what's going on in the weather business, which is ultimately all about providing people with information, is very much parallel to what's going on both in other information sources and in entertainment as well. The Weather Channel, interestingly, and when you think about it, those two words, weather and channel. Channel implies a delivery platform that is pre uh, digital and one of the challenges they're facing is what happens when people are looking for weather information and it's not over a channel. So Weather Mob uh, was born originally trying to capture the human conversation that exists around the weather. Um, uh, whilst I'm a massive fan of the Weather Channel um, and they're a friend to Weather Mob and to me personally, um, I, I also think that there is uh, often uh, more compelling and longer session times if you can humanize the data as much as possible. The transformation that this industry is going through uh, because of what the digital technology allows in terms of personalization and the rapid move from broadcast, if you will, to a, a personal uh, curation of, of uh, the media experience is so exciting an area to uh, study. iPhone watch launches. Weather Channel's not the featured weather app. We're not, but our data suppliers are. It's an app called, uh, we are both Davids in this world of Goliaths who sit next to me, and it's called the Dark Sky app. They were the featured weather app on the iPhone uh, watch. So just think about what that means. Um, and, and Dark Skies is run by two guys, two engineers. That's it. There are um, sort of two <coughs> models. There are, uh, to paint this starkly, is there a bunch of, bunch of uh, 18 year olds running around with their uh, Apple watches getting barometric pressure uh, readings? That's one way to do it. Or you can do Sherry's way, which is to have highly trained meteorologists uh, even, even contract with additional meteorologists in uh, San Francisco by buying the uh, uh, by buying, uh, under, uh, underground uh, weather underground. Uh, you can tap into uh, this vast uh, array of not 8,000, but tens of thousands of U.S. government weather stations and then augment that with uh, planes flying all over uh, the world, all of which are being beamed down and uh, crunched through algorithms that have been developed by these uh, doctorates over years. So why isn't that a better model than some joker taking a picture hmm. in, uh, in Tokyo of the sky? No. So, I mean, I really think it's a combination. Okay. Um, I think, you know, weather forecasting is just evolving, and the more information we can get, the more accuracy. So I, I think there's a lot of power in the social network and people reporting their weather. Um, we've tried a couple things similar to that. Um, it's definitely a good way to, to understand if you got it right or wrong um, as well, but I think it's just evolving over time. So I don't think there's a limit to the information that you can gather to create your forecast, but then I do think Think that you have to have the science and the data science and the mathematicians behind it in order to really come out with that forecast and what it should be. So I think it's the more data that we get around the weather, the more accurate we become, but then the more personal we become to our users as well in understanding what type of weather information they actually want, what impacts them. The Dark Sky app is two engineers pulling the models from National Weather Services all around the world. So Weather Channel spending a huge amount of money, as is Bashi, mm -hmm. on meteorologists in their rooms. The data exists, the interpolations, the meteorologists will do different kinds of models on top of them. But two guys sitting in Western Massachusetts are the premier app on, um, and they are modeling. They are not meteorologists. I'm not a, no one in this row is a meteorologist. Neither is Al Roker or Sam Champion, for the record. They're storytellers. But these are not meteorologists. They are engineers who are interpolating the models that are available and free to anybody in the world. 
I'm sitting here wondering, oh my God, is the Weather Channel going to be uh, disrupted as a legacy company? Because mm -hmm. you've got these um, uh, studios sitting down in Atlanta, a lot of high-priced uh, but good-looking anchors. <laughs> uh, you've got union TV crews, uh, all of which have built-in cost. And everyone and people are just interested in the um, uh, in the data, which they're going to be able to uh, get more and more and so more and more accurately from uh, from Bashi and uh, Julia. So, how long before you flush the TV unit down the toilet? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not sure that will happen. I think we will evolve as the TV industry evolves. Um, certainly, um, you know, we're entering into the OTT space, um, providing and those over, over the top, over the over the TV. top devices, uh, Roku, smart TVs, Apple TVs. Um, sling so we are moving the broadcast it doesn't have to be on the television anymore it's essentially just another monitor um, but there's still some type of programming that you want to see live and sometimes it's weather sports um, everything else you know you watch when you want to but the question what 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 the hell's wrong with the weather what's what's uh, going on? I do want you to um, hear what Sherry said here in the uh, Frank Batten building at Weather Channel, is that the Weather Channel is a mobile-led company, all right? Think about that. Frank Batten even didn't know what, uh, when he founded it, what, uh, what mobile, uh, mobile was.